Welcome back. You listen to Geek Out, and it's mal his malfunction. Well, I'm malfunction, and it's malfunction. Anyway, this is Vigo Radio. Welcome back. After a few songs there, we needed a bit of a break um, and just have a drink and talk to um, Rob out there and say hello and catch up on a little bit of things. And it's it's quite interesting. Um, thanks to Mike Bateau, my mate, um, who shared the article he wrote yesterday or whenever he wrote it but i got on my page yesterday and got in contact with rob and said hey man do you remember me and he did and <laughs> here we are so we're live uh hey hannah whoops i did something wrong oh no here we go all right we're live on facebook on my page but we'll be sharing that as well rob introduce yourself to our local whanau uh kia ora whanau. my name is rob mokaraka and i hail from a small place called mataraiwa which is at the back of Kaikohe. And, uh, um, and my nanny is from the Hokianga, from Pangaru. Mm -hmm. So I'm uh, all about Te Tai yep. And on my mum's side, I'm from Lake Waikari Moana, so that's my tūhui. Yep. Mm, so, brother, and I used to go to Northland Polytechnic Drama, and that's how we met. Yep, that's what, 20, over 20 odd years ago, uh, 25. Yeah, yeah, yeah bro. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was remembering Warwick Davis, my oh. close man of mine, whose brother is um, Tammy Davis. Yeah. Right? And I knew Tammy and you know, we protested when the barn was falling apart. And I was thinking about all these things. I was thinking, yeah, that's how we connected and how our applied arts and our drama you um you know, um production teams were so close knit. Yeah. We drank together, <laughs> we protested together, we hung out together and you know, and we just backed each other up whenever something was needed and so tell us about the shop bro that you're doing and yeah um, well basically shop bro is uh based about based upon my uh own mental breakdown mental and spiritual breakdown combination yep. in 2009 where i thought i was the only crazy person on the planet uh man i've been there three times so yeah yeah yeah, yeah bro well, we're in the club and yeah. like we're bro, just to be talking with you right now face to face yeah i know we're blessed bro to be alive man i, I mean my sister saved me I had the nurses at Northern, uh, Northland Hospital here, Whangarei, save me. Wow. You know, um, I've had three, um, three instances where I've been like, yeah, I want out. And, um, and, you know, but the problem, I think, is that in uh, thinking that if, if we do it, it's about us leaving, but we're not talking about everybody else that's affected. And I've been having to clarify my brain around that. And my sister said, you know, I'm tired of you doing this. I had to be locked up for two weeks. Yeah. Because it was like we found out that we we're in the wrong meds. My brain was wired the wrong you know, being rewired the wrong way. And and this is at the middle of starting a business. Woo! Right in the middle of a successful business, which is now successful as in America, yeah. which we're doing a lot of things when I'm talking about comic books, I'm talking wow. about games, I'm talking about you know, all this stuff. Yeah. Brain you know, boom, I'm out. Thank you, bye bye. <laughs> so um, give us a bit um, before I just realized I should let people know who you actually are like you're an art um, you're an actor and stuff people who might not oh, know yeah. you Kia ora so uh, I'm an actor writer and uh, studied at Northland Polytechnic Drama where I met the brother and we hung out and applied arts mm. and um, so basically when I had my mental and spiritual breakdown in 2009 over the seven years I uh, was using my Maori superpowers and my theatrical superpowers to unlock why I had my guts cut wide open, why there was a Glock 9mm bullet inside of me mm. because I provoked the police to shoot me dead in the, in the chaos of the storm. I call this the storm. Yeah, yeah. And so um, seven years later I was finally mentally, physically, spiritually ready yeah. to tell my story in a safe way. Thanks to my director. Yeah. She's actually from up here, but her name is Edna Daniels. She is a Nazi white. Excellent. And uh, we premiered it right here at 116 Bank Street. Wow. And I uh, feel really honored to come back, brother, and to sit with you. Yeah. And to look in that space and go, that's where we launched it, and I've been on the road on and off for two years. Wow. Yeah. It's amazing. Now, I was looking at your IMDb page, which is what I look at anybody's, because I, that's where I, I host myself, and being, um, you know, film-minded and stuff, and... Well, you went away to act, I went away to film school. Yeah. And so, then I saw that, that you were busy yesterday shooting a film, short film. So tell us about that. Uh, yeah, this is all part of the healing journey. So everything I'm sort of ma making myself and creating or collaborating with in general is use, 
creating tools for healing. Yeah. So yeah. we can make we're creating cinematic medicine. Yeah. So what I'm doing is I'm retelling a short I'm retelling the events based around my shooting yeah. through a short film. Yeah. And people go, Oh, that's dangerous. And I go, yeah. No, it's real. Yeah. And their safety because I'm doing the show around the country, I have a framework a tikanga, a practical practice yeah. to look after all audiences. Yes. And so what I'm doing now is implementing that and transferring it into a cinematic realm, not yeah. just to frame it, to frame it in a tikanga and in a, in a, in a safe way, in a safe format. So when audiences watch this, they will feel the intensity of, of, of what it's like. They yeah. will also feel uh, love and compassion yeah. for these people. And at the end of it, it just beams hope mm. and mm. promise. So we're in the early stages because we're not we're not going for funding. I was shortlisted twice by the New Zealand Film Commission. Yeah. But to be honest, I think they um, they're just scared. They're scared of the I, subject material. I found like I've been talking to um, my mentor, and I think a lot of us in our age group yeah. don't want to deal with other people telling us how we should write our stories. Now, uh, myself as a um, publisher, I'm like a um, creator. I go. Our story is our way. That's the theme. Love right? it. Love that it. means that nobody outside telling me how I should write my stories. Or if there's, if, and if my friend on the, my artist goes, you need to change some things, I will. Because it's our stories, our way. Yeah. Not their stories, our way. It's our stories, our way. And that's, that's, that's what I like. I think you're right. Because when you have outsiders, and as, it was, as well intentioned as they might be. They all will come with that agenda. Oh, absolutely. You know, they all will come with, well, maybe you should change that for that audience. Maybe you should change that for that audience. And at the end of the day, you know, you have to have your own integrity involved. Otherwise, people will see, hey, you know, that's a bit of a sellout. Why don't, why don't you back off from that? And I think you, as a storyteller, have, have to own it, and you are owning it. You're right, bro, and I'm owning all my flaws as well. Yeah. Like, I'm far from perfect, and people they say to me, oh, you must be healed now, and I go, no, oh, no, it's ongoing. No. It's ongoing. And I always have to, I'm actively seeking new tools. Yeah. And, and as I seek them for myself, I'll share those tools. Yeah. And if people want them, they can. If not, that's okay. Yeah, and I think that's the same. I'm, I'm on the same journey, because yeah. I'm like, I have to rewrite my brain, man. Yeah. I've suffered from any depression, and my sister said to me, well, you need to deal with that. You need to, need to sort out how you're going to deal with it. And I go, well, I did a gut. Got a garden now. I sit on the balcony and garden my plants. I mean, what about plants and talk? You know, talk to them and look after them. And then I go inside, do my work, and then, you know, listen to music, listen to other people laugh. Yeah. And, and I've stopped watching horror movies. Yeah. Because that screws with my brain. Yeah. And emotional m m films, like I don't watch dramas anymore because it it makes me emotional. And mm -hmm. emotional brings back all these things I don't want to deal with at the time. Yeah. I'll deal with it in time. And, you know, we're all on a journey because we've got to heal. And I think a lot of people go, oh, you're okay now? Yeah. Not really, but I'm working on it. And you're yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. You're, we're on a journey to get better. Oh, absolutely. And yeah. I'm, um, for the last two years, I've been facing all my tiny farm demons to, yeah. um, and head on. Yeah. And I'll just be pretty very open about it. So well, I say this in the forum. So, so uh, the Western uh, medical... Uh, diagnosed me with undiagnosed depression. Yeah. And in the last two years, I've discovered it was actually unresolved trauma. Yeah. So once I've unpacked that, yeah. and that was uh, through uh, sporadic violence, so it was family uh, yeah. get-togethers. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And and also, uh, I just had to go and see a shrink again um, yeah. a year and a half ago because I had memories of being sexually molested. Yeah. So with that, I understand why I tried to take my life a few times growing up. Exactly. It was just very deep. And yeah. so being on this journey with help, I'm not alone, by the way. No, I'm, no, you're I'm, not the only I'm sitting here and I'm, I'm in the same case. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. I understand fully and I can say with my thing, emotional things, I'm exactly in the same boat with the sexual abuse and stuff. And, and so, and also, you know, having to retrain. And so anything will go, well, you know, a lot of times we just go medicated, medicated, medicated. And I'm thinking, gee, I medicated myself and I had a... Uh, medical overdose yeah you know and but what do we do now so it's like okay so what are the other options yeah to self-healing to actually healing our brain to healing healing our emotions well we are open about it 
and uh, we were talking just before about being, hey, you know, you know, people go down so it's a small thing, but it is a small thing. So they yeah. all pile up and bring that big, big mountain there, man. It becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, people go, don't make a, what is it, a, a mountain out of an anthill? Yeah. Well, yeah, you know how big those anthills can become? Yeah. You know, it's only, it's a little bit, they're big, but the mount, the things, hills they have, you know, they're a bit, way bigger than themselves. And you're right, uh, you know, there are emotions and there are traumas that build upon that and that causes depression. Yeah. Because it, those, those are things that happen, man. And, and, and they get compounded by emotions. As a child, we don't know how to deal with that, you know? Bro, you just opened up something. I was just chatting with a brother out there with having a coffee. Yeah. And two friends, Aaron Spence and Lynn Hunt, mm. they said to me two different times, we've always been taught Oh no, we've always been told to get over it. Yeah. We've never been taught how to navigate through it. Yeah. So when we do explode, everybody freaks out because no one actually has the tools. Yeah. And now we, our generation and the and, and the up and coming generations are now looking at that. Yeah. So it becomes less and less of a burden yeah. because we've got more and more tools. Yeah. And that's and that's what um um like at the moment we were just talking to Lucas just a little earlier about neuroscientists. You know, we have people in the past, and here's the weird thing, in churches would say that they're full of demons, right? But they had Asperger's. Yeah. They had OCD, or they had um, ADHD. Oh, they're unruly children. He's got ADHD. He doesn't know how to focus. Uh, or emotionalist. Um, I know a friend who's an, um, who's an actor, who a couple of weeks ago talked to the expert, um, it's a trigger finger expert, who doesn't know how to be emotionally connected to anyone at all. There's no emotional connection as an actor. Must be pretty bland, bro, to watch. Yeah, <laughs> but, but he said, I practice and I practice and I practice that emotion. And he, go, and he was brilliant. Oh, wow. and, okay. and this is the thing. So you, it's and him, uh, with that, I guess you could, you know, people call it disability, but outside of that, very intelligent, and he's able to practice that hard out so much that he can do anybody now. Yeah. By watching other actors, he can be them. Yeah. And this is the things that, I mean, we did in the past that we didn't understand. And you're right. Our generation and the next one coming up, they understand. They have the tools. They can look online, find out. You can go, I mean, I do this on every Sunday. I listen to TED Talks. Yeah. You know, I just go do about my things, watch my clothes, come back in the room, watch this as in TED Talk. 20 minutes, you got you know... You have a brilliant de person in the master's degree around the world, PhDs. Chalk it all up to 20 minutes of the entire wisdom. Yeah. You know? And on that point, bro, when I was mm, slowly creating Shop, bro, mm. with all my writings, I used to watch TED Talks about depression. Yeah. And that, those talks would give me depression. I've already got it. Yeah. Because some of them were so bland and emotionally yeah. disconnected, I went, oh, man, yeah. I'm not going to be as boring as you are. Yeah. And so why, with that in mind, we created this thing so you actually feel the emotion. Yeah. You feel the intensity of the tanifa or the black dog. Yeah. But also you feel the intensity of the light and the aroha. Yeah. And we, we strategically made this piece of work, the director, Ed and I. Yeah. So every time there's something dark and heavy, it's padded on both sides with humor and light. That's what I was going to yeah. say next. Yeah. One of the things I've done is like I'll, I'll watch comedy yeah. a lot now. In the last eight months, I've watched more comedy than I've ever done. Yeah. And not only that, but animated uh, cartoons. So it's like a, you know, it's like a fantasy world, but there's a lot of humor. And, and I was just thinking, Maori humor and Pacific Island humor is so different. Um, I, was, I keep telling people to watch Thor Ragnarok. <laughs> yeah. You know? Love it. Even my friend, um, um, just yesterday, I said to Ayla, I said, have you seen Thor Ragnarok? It's, a, it's why I came back into watching... Um, Marvel, com uh, Marvel movies, because mm -hmm. I was just done with it. And then my sister said, you need to watch this. You need to watch Say, I don't want to watch Just watch this. And I watched it twice. And we watched it with her, then I went home and watched it again. And it's our humor. Yeah. It's our humor, yeah. you know? Yeah. It's not anybody else's humor. It's our humor. It's very unique to us. And so using humor with a solid, you know, horrible situation or serious subject it's easier to go across, and you're right, padding it. Yeah, padding it. A adding um, the message gets home, you know, a bit easier. Oh, a lot easier. 
this subject material is so relevant to you and I, yeah. and to hundreds of thousands of oh, people. Man. It, it's, that, it's so heavy that people freak out when I say, well, they say what are you doing? It's just a revenge, and I see a little twitch in their eye. Like, yeah. Oh, are you really? Oh, that's nice. Yeah. And they try and move past it, and that's okay. Yeah. That's okay. So to use the humor mm -hmm. is to get down everybody's um, security systems. Yeah, the walls. And, and while they're the laughing, blankets. Yeah, while they're laughing, yeah. that's when I start to put the medicine in. Yeah. And it's safer. Yeah. I mean, we all, I mean, man, everybody, nobody gets out alive. Well, hopefully we do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, at the end of the day, we all, we all go to the grave. But yeah. while we're here, and this is what I'm finding in my own life, is that by connecting people to other people to other people that we're able to share our experiences to be open about them and not only just that but also our skills yeah you know we're able, we we can say you know like lucas a children's writer be it, and part of that he's able to help me think about well i need to meditate on my life not meditation and airy fairy which people talk about but i'm you know get freaked out about but actual sitting there and talk, thinking about things yeah. that's meditating yeah. You know, it's like saying, well, what do I need to do today? Um, who do I need to see about this and that? And that's meditating. That's and thinking. And manifesting. Yeah. We're talking about that. Yeah. And how do I make these things happen that I want to happen in my life or in their life? How do I help my bro there do that? You know, how do I help him advance? And so tell us about the writing process of um, Short Bro. Well, I was in hospital with my guts cut wide open. Yeah. Uh, no more hiding. The whole world knew that Rob had a mental breakdown. Yeah. Uh, and I just started trying to write poetry and short stories. Yeah. Yeah. It's like sort of a third person. Yeah. Or like what happened to Rob? Yeah. You're sort of like looking at it from yeah. the outside. Yeah. Because yeah. I was in an extreme state of apprehension. Yeah. Twenty four seven. Yeah. On morphine. The morphine wasn't strong enough. I'm yeah. just my everything is screaming out like ah stop the pain. Yeah. But within that pain, I had to be extremely present. There was yeah. no more hiding. Yeah. So the writings I slowly accumulated over time. And then eventually, a few years later, I tried to write a script. Yeah. And it was a bit ranty. And it was a bit raped because that's yeah. where I was in my healing. Yeah. you got to go for the anger, the grief, yeah. the denial. And yeah. then... It wasn't my... Yeah, yeah, it, it wasn't was everybody me. Else. It's everybody else. It they everybody did it. Else. Their fault. Yeah. Everybody. And so I had some friends read it and they go, oh, I sure if I'd sit through this yeah and I really appreciated the honesty bro yeah and because they loved me they just gave me the real they exactly me... yeah I mean I've had someone come up to me and go bro we're not on that level anymore we're up here <laughs> so can we behave can you sort yourself out and I and I went home and I thought you're such an idiot man why why you know you're not you're not a child and you must stop behaving like a child grow up and I did and that's and then the connections came with people so go, okay well he's serious about things and you're right, I mean, sometimes we can, you know, be really aggro about stuff because we're hurting and we don't know how to, you know, how to pass that on, um, pass over that. And by writing it down, you know, I tell people like, um, you know, write, get that emotion into paper, get it into, into art, getting into music. Yes. And rather than at people, get it onto something else creatively because creativity, you know, artistic art, helps us get it out of our head absolutely you know, because otherwise we're just smashing walls and windows and you know each other or, yeah yeah and um yep. and that's not where we want to be as human beings because then we got to apologize then we got to <laughs> fess up to it then we got to go oh man i'm so sorry but if we do it on the paper slowly it's out and so how did you um you know like you, uh, you talked about your um, director what was her name sorry edna edna and so, how did you team up with her to um, start bringing that all together? Well, I had multiple workshops over a lot of time, yeah. but um, it was a bit too intense for me. So I, I'd have actors act out my work with a dramaturg, yeah. and I'd just be the observer as the writer, yeah. and um, with an audience, yeah. and um, they would feedback, and I just like okay, thank you, and then I just put it away in the drawer because it was too overwhelming for me. Yeah. So over the years, when I was getting closer to the time. I started actively seeking out who could possibly direct this. Yeah. And I had some male friends who yeah. go, I'd love to direct this. And I looked at them, I went, oh, I can't have anyone crazier than me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> love you, bro. Yeah. But uh, I can't have someone equally as crazy or more. Yeah. And, um, and I finally thought, oh, I was hanging out socially at a friend's house. And I saw my friend Edna, whose work I admire. Yeah. And I said, sis, would you be interested in helping me unpack this thing? Yeah. And she goes, send me the script and I have a look. 
and she became my dramaturg, my therapist, yeah. and my confidant, and we unpacked it together because yeah. I never articulated this aloud. Yeah. So she basically unpacked the writing with me, mm. and we figured out how to clarify stuff that was unclear to her. And she goes, I don't yeah. get this. Can you clarify? I yeah. went, I don't get it either. I just didn't know how to word it. Yeah. So it's just unpacking it safely. It's kind of, a, um, and you have that secure place where you can actually bounce ideas off. Yeah. I mean, I'm working on a web series at the moment, and you know, I'm the writer, but somebody else is going to be producing and getting all the other side of it done. And, you know, and he wanted to know where, what was my aim of this? What was the vision? And so, and you're right, you know, she's able to go, okay, what is, you know, what is the purpose of this? And you're sort of going, well, you know, uh, if she can't understand it, and if you can't understand it, the audience won't understand it. Yeah. And, and your audience, I mean, people think, well, the audience is just, you know, they don't know, they don't get it, that's their fault. Actually, a lot of it's on us. Yeah. Because if they don't get it, it's because we haven't, haven't packaged it in a way for them to get it. And, um, and sometimes a, a lot of directors will cop out and go, oh, nah, it's just not meant for you then. And I'm like, well, you know, it's like with music. I mean, I listen to music for the lyrics. Yeah. Um, and if it's all, rah, 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 I'm a metalhead. If it's, rah, 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 and I can't understand the words, I won't listen to that band. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. simple. Yeah. You know, and that's not for me. And I think you have that, but you also, have, if you're doing something as uh, as powerful as what you're doing with Chopra, because it reaches so many people, and, and a lot of people go, well, that they might know, might not have it in their own life, but they will know someone. Yeah, absolutely. This is the community we live in where somebody is affected by this, and uh, all that, all that. And you've got so many things that you cover um, from what I hear. Yeah. I have, you know, what I've read. Yeah. And so I'm thinking, okay, well, I want to see this when it's on. And, um, but the other thing is um, that it's an amazing opportunity to, for people to actually go and, and like I was just reading that article with, and there's a lady that follows you around, and what and oh yes, you know and she's how, a mother yeah yeah her, her, she lost someone, and and about her husband who wanted to beat you up, yeah. because, you know, it, he didn't get it at first but now, is a supporter, yeah you know? uh, um, because it's a, because, when we're talking about mental health and what I'm, and and Mike King calls it the inner critic yeah and I've modified it for myself because mm. my inner critic is unresolved trauma yeah. And so when it tells me that I'm shit yeah. every day, yeah. and then I figured it out, it took me a long time because he would yell at me. Yeah. It figured, I figured it out like, oh, he just needs a hug yeah. because he's not being placated. Yeah. I have to go back to that little hurt boy who's turned, turned into a man yeah. and um, I had to give, have a good cry about it, brother, to be honest, yeah. and cry and let it out. Yeah. And go, that's not mine to hold, that's someone else's. Yeah. And that's, it, that's there. Yeah. And I'm here now. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. okay, let's get on. And a lot of times, I mean, you know, I, I, I see a lot of people carrying their baggage. Yeah. And I kind of think, but trauma is very personal. Oh, yeah. So I've gotten past that, oh, why aren't they over it? And I'm thinking, no, no, no. It's very personal to it, each person. And, and to get to that stage, you can't push someone into it. You're right. And, um, yeah. and all you can do is say, here's a mirror. Here's me. Here's what I've been through. You know, yeah. Um, how you deal with it is up to you, and 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 that whole hard up thing. Talk about that hard up. <laughs> you know, well, that's an archaic mindset. That's just from a repressed tradition. Mm. It's so archaic that it's we we have to turn it around. Because I say crying is better than dying. Yeah. And I told my fourteen year old daughter this, who hasn't seen it yet, but she knows what happened to dad. Yeah. And she goes, "Why do you have to say that for dad?" And I go, "Because my darling." Everybody thought it was the other way around. Yeah. And the look she gave me was like, this is insanity, Dad. Yeah. I went, I know, my darling. Welcome to our generation. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and, and changing that vibration mm. and illuminating uh, our own peers yeah. and our own parents. Yeah. Because that harden up thing is killing us. It it's, is. It's more like we need to open up. Yeah. And that scares a lot of males in particular. Yeah. Yeah. One thing I noticed was, I mean, um, I, I've talked to this amongst my mates and it's like, Women's women are more open to emotional things, and we you know we appreciate them for that, and that's amazing. But whenever men get together, they don't open up, and they sort of oh, well, let's talk about rugby. And I'm a fan of league, and 
you know, in sports and stuff like that. But I also love all these other things as well. But we just talk about those superficial things. We don't actually go, well, how's your, how's things in your life, you know? How is that happening? And it's like, we don't talk about that. So we just have this wall around us. And I think our generation is more like, what's happening in your life? Yeah. And I yeah. think that's, that's awesome because yeah. we, we've gotten over that superficiality because we want to connect now. We connect with it through the internet to Russia. Yeah. We connect through the internet to Italy, to France, to Spain, and we can talk to them instantly. And so connectivity is the main thing right now. And, and I think that is tearing away with all the superficiality that we've had for so long and so many hundreds of years. And we've just overnight, we can just take that away. We can, and it's scary for people because they built their foundations on a belief system yeah. that is actually so obsolete it needs to be replaced. Yeah. And as soon as you start talking like that, some people get riled up and they, hey, 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 hey shut mm -hmm. your mouth. Mm -hmm. And I went, well, anger is fear. Fear is anger. Are you saying I'm scared? Yeah. I'm not afraid of anybody. I'm thinking deep down I know you're afraid of you. Yeah. And right? that's what it comes down to, yeah. right? Yeah. Because it's fear. And fear stops us from learning. Fear stops us from helping others. And fear helps us from stopping up, um, helping ourselves. Yeah. Because it's like, you know, looking in the mirror going, well, what's wrong with me? Really, why am I angry about this thing? Okay, why do I react, you know, this way? And I think we stop looking at ourselves and we start looking at other people and so they are the problem now, not yeah, us. Yeah, and it's also that's, well, you're just, that's a very, you know, a very conscious way of looking at it yeah. because that means you're aware. Yeah. Because we're walking around yeah. plugged into the matrix, so to speak. Yeah. And so we're just acting, reacting, acting, reacting. Mm. And I look at it and hear people and I go, wow, you just, you don't even know you're triggered. And yeah. people go, oh, that's just grump, grumpy uncle, blah, blah. That's just crazy auntie, blah, blah. I go, no, yeah. they're, they're not crazy. And he's, the grump, he's been angry all his life. No, he's just been triggered all his life. Yeah. Because he didn't know and she didn't know. Yeah. It's just been the everyday norm. But your, yeah. your, your core little brother is at a conscious level. Like, I'm being aware of it. We're being aware of it. Yeah. I mean, I dropped a, um, a full jar of pepper and, um, you know, hope, and it was like, it just, I was about to have dinner, and it just dropped, and I went, huh, I'm going to, I'm going to leave that, I'm going to go have my dinner, <laughs> before it'd be like, yeah, spun out, seriously, it was like, I just wasted so much money, and I'm like, ah, but like, I was like, and I'm like, okay, this is pretty good, this is a good learning curve right here, <laughs> yeah. you know, I'm like, I'm not, angry anymore when I should be but about that but then I'm like no no I'll come back to that and then I'll back him it up when I'm calm when I'm settled yeah. because and this is little things but I mean that can build into huge yes. violence man yeah. I've seen people just you know I walked into the middle of fights to stop fights it's getting on me because I've just felt it's wrong yeah you know yeah. you know and and so if we don't deal with the little things, and we're talking about sweating the little things, if we don't deal with those little things that trigger us, it'll become bigger and bigger. And Absolutely. so when when is your show on and when's next? You know, oh, you well, I still get, I'm like, I, I make a little joke about it. As I, I'm like Batman. I get the bat signal in the sky yeah. via the uh, my Facebook page, mm. via emails, texts, mm. and I say, well, where do you need me? And so I try and make that work because I'm not funded or sponsored. Yeah. Therefore, I don't have uh, any politics attached. Exactly. And I can just give direct access to communities. Yeah. yeah. The real with love on tap. And I like that. No politics attached. I'm the same. I've 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 I've, I've cleared myself from any groups. So that I can I walk I can walk on old waters, you know what I mean? And I like that because that means you don't you're not like oh you're funded by them so I can't have you on this one. I know, and that's the, that's part of the six systems that we're, yeah. we're we're having to live within. I see it everywhere. Yeah, and that's why, uh, especially the mental health system, I, I refer it to uh, archaic bath water yeah. that has been keeping us sick yeah. for like. Well, you go, this medicine or that medicine will fix you, but then you realize, and this is what happened with me, it was like, my doctor goes to me, he goes, look, I can put you on these painkillers, which is good for you, but you can't take those pills, because it will kill you. And this is antidepressants. Yeah. It will give you heart, heart palpitations, and it will give you heart attacks. I'm like, okay, 
let's just work with that because I suffer from chronic pain. So and I'm like, and then with that, my ma my brain became clear. So you can see, and and I'm like, I'm not like don't use medicine or anything. I'm just like, see this, this has been shutting my brain off for two years, yeah. and it kept me not full of energy that I'm used to being. You know, I'm a workaholic and I've always been. But and that's the other thing, we men are workaholics by nature. And so if we don't have, and here's a, something that my friend was talking about when we were talking about, um, that when we lose our jobs, we lose our identity. That's right. The self-worth goes. Yes. And then if we lose our children, we live, lose everything. And then there comes the shot, as they say, you know. Yeah. You know, um, as Rage Against the Machine goes, you know, there comes the shot. And, but, and that's when we just go, well, if I've got nothing to live for. Yeah. And this is the thing, and then there's a, I think it was a four to one suicide ratio between male and female. And we in New Zealand and Whangarei had the highest. Yeah. And so, um, you know, I've been talking with people about this and saying, well, we, we need, we're not, we don't want anything as males to be taken away from females, but we need to have more for males. And I think um, if you want to heal our community, then we got to have provisions and what funding, non political funding. Yeah. And I call it non denominational funding. Where you don't have any one religion saying, you know, or any one affiliation saying, this is where you go to to get this done. And if you're there, then we'll give you money towards it. I think we just need a place to say, well, if you want to be part, of, you know, if you want to help people in the community, just put in that little kitty there. Yeah. You know, and that's all you got to do, nothing else. And just take your hand away from it. And I think a lot of people have this um, one hand out, one hand in, you know, yeah. and that's where it becomes political when you can't do things and I think we in Fungray need what you're doing yeah and we need to everywhere as possible now in saying that is it age appropriate or is it anybody well the people are bringing their kids from seven years and up because okay. kids are emotionally intelligent yes they get to just they I just love get the, that. they yeah. get the heart of it yeah and the parents get the bigger picture yeah so the kids are laughing with yeah. me and then and they go oh that's a bit so when they see the tanifa when I yeah. just, when I show them on stage, some kids laugh yeah. because they go, "Look at that big guy having a, a tantrum." Yeah. Whereas parents go, "Oh, he's having a mental breakdown. Oh, yeah. I've known that voice. Oh, that voice is terrifying." Yeah. And the kids are thinking it in a different way. It's just a monster. It, and he's having a tantrum. Yeah. <laughs> and I, and I, and, I keep, and I was, I've been telling that to my friends and I'm like I mean adults. Yeah. That children get it. Oh yeah. They understand it and. We have been for so long have been thinking of children as they don't get it because they're just young and we pass it off. But man, from what I've been, you know, from my own personal studies and just around my my own family and stuff, children get it. And yeah. I think we need to be honest and say, hey, this is what mom and dad are feeling. This is what's going on. So if we're yelling at each other, it's not because of you, because children take it on as their own. Oh, yeah. And they take, take that on and that's later on life that affects them. But if we say, well, sorry, mum and dad are having problem, money problems. Uh, so we just need to talk about that. And sometimes we yell at each other, but that's not because of you, but it's because of us. Yeah. And I think we need to get rid of the whole children don't understand thing away from that. And that's why I make, make my show kids kid appropriate. Yeah. Because it, so they can actually listen and go, well, this is helpful or not. But maybe 10 years on the road, they might... You know, trigger something in their brain and go, oh, that's what I need to do. No, they get it, bro. They yeah. get it. We are the ones that adults become more uh, complicated yeah. and we're confused. There's so many mixed messages we've heard throughout mm. our growing up and, um, and kids just simplify it. So when I did my show here yeah. uh, two years ago, my nine-year-old niece came with my wow. uh, sister and she watched it twice with her mates wow. from her kura Yeah. And she came up to me smiling. She went, uncle, is your show about sad people need lots of love and hugs? Yeah. And she simplified it to its essence. And I went, yeah. yes, that's exactly what my show is about. basically it, isn't it? Yeah, and it was yeah. beautiful. And that's out of the mouths of babes. Exactly. You know? Because they get it. They get it. We, you know, and, and that's what I was asking, whether it's um, appropriate. Because then we can say, well, hey, look, anywhere. Churches, um, Kangaroo, yeah, um, you know, um, here, um, anywhere, schools. Yeah. And I think... I think people need to start opening doors to something like this because if they're going to say, um, we got kids dying again and then not open doors to something that's going to help them, well, it's your fault they're dying. 
Yeah, well, you know, this, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I don't want to yeah. mince words anymore. I'm yeah. tired of it. Yeah. I spoke about this on uh, Nati Hine uh, 15 years ago, bro. Yeah. Suicide, yeah. incest, uh, child abuse, domestic violence. 15 years ago. And I'm sick and tired of repeating myself. 15 freaking years ago, man. Yeah. And I'm here I am, and we're dealing with the same thing again. Now, I'm, I don't mince words anymore. Yeah. It's like, if you're not going to open a door to allow kids to hear something like this, then what you're doing is stopping them from learning and therefore you, you're you part of the problem now. Yeah, Fang, Whangarei is bad. Yeah. And those high schools, and they know who they are, yeah. they are losing their students yeah. to suicide yeah. and they're putting a blanket over it so no one talks about it yeah. because they think their job was worth more than those kids' lives. Exactly. So I say step aside, fire yourself. Yeah. I mean, just have a break, choose another vocation, yeah. and let these kids have some light and hope and some practical educational tools. Yeah. Uh, and so that's what I'm up against, and, um, yeah. and I don't mind, I don't go chasing them, I go, they, they call me. Yeah. And um, I've only done like several s colleges yeah. over two years, yeah. and those are from the brave principals who went, that's enough, that is enough, we're not yeah. going to lose yeah. another kid. Yeah. And, I've, and I take my hat off to them for saying, thank you for putting your, your students' lives ahead of your job. Yeah. I mean, I'm hearing stories of bullying yeah. all, all the time. Yeah. I'm, I'm hearing st um, kids, you know, uh, getting it at home, bullying at home from parents, from dads, mums. Uh, then they go to school. They get it from their freaking peers. Then they, uh, then they go online. They get it from freaking strangers. Yeah. And so at the end of the day, there's like three-way freaking violence on their brain. And who do we have to reach to? No safety net. No one to say... Uh, well, hey, come over here, sit down, let's talk about this, let's fix this. When you're online, and if somebody's thinking that, you walk away and do this. If you're at school and somebody's doing it, you come and see the counsellor. Or you go see your mate and they sort that out. Or whatever. And I think, I, Craig McPherson, I think, no, sorry, not, what was it, Craig Daniel? Um, um, Bond. Blonde Bond. Daniel Craig. Yeah, Daniel Craig. He said on Ferguson, if you're bullying my child and my child tells you to stop and you don't, my child has a right to punch you in the face. <laughs> this is Mr. Bond. Yeah, man. I know there's sometimes, man, I mean, you, we know that, I know mm. that violence is the inability to articulate your frustration. Exactly. But sometimes, man, that's yeah. just a, it, it's old school, brother. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I don't condone violence. I've seen a yeah. lot of violence growing up, brother. Yeah. I've seen a lot of violence. Yeah, I've, and, I've nearly been murdered. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. so violence. So, but, you yeah. know, I understand that mentality. So, yeah. and my, I'll tell you a story. When I was um, really young and I was being bullied at, at primary school, yeah. and my nan, she's yeah. still alive, she's here in Whangarei, yeah. my nan was coming to stay with us. She saw me crying and yeah. I was getting bullied and beaten up. So what she goes, here, take this stick. Mm and hide it under the tree yeah. and so I did and sure enough the bully chased me from school again yeah. and I ran to that tree and I picked it up yeah. and I whacked this kid yeah. I whacked him around the legs real hard on the back yeah. and he ran away crying now yeah. I'm not saying it solved the bullying no. problem but what it did it put him on notice yeah. that now I'm getting some power yeah. but the main power is I told somebody which was my nan yeah. and my nan went right we're that's what I mean by stepping away yeah, and yeah. saying hey look so this is what's happening in my life and that person has to be the safety net. And we need those safety nets. And I yeah. think um, we need to take power, and you're right, power away from the bullies. But remember, and, and, it's, and, and Mike King said it, and so have my other mm. friends in this uh, arena, mm. is that those bullies are being bullied. Yes. So they need help yes. too. They need love. Yeah. And so we can't just fight fire with fire. Yeah. We actually have to pour light all over it. Yeah. And that means over their families. Yeah. Then you'll start to see where this behavior learned behavior is coming mm -hmm. from. I've been thinking about that. Yeah. That cycle of violence, yeah. but, but that, you know, like, I'm thinking about, like, racism, right? Yep. Okay. I put, no baby grows up, comes out of the womb racist, or violent, or abusive, or addicted, unless they've got pee, or, you know, or, or as we say, crack babies, that sort of thing. Just a normal baby comes out unaware of the world, and then he's taught how to hate, how to be a bigot, how to be violent, how to be abusive, how to be a bully from the home. Yeah. And we go, oh, no, 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 no it's, it's at school. It's all no, no. What's the home 
situation like and people go well you know we parents you know and they said send the kids it's all the kids what they learn at school so we take the we take the child out of the house and we put them in school and say it's all the school's got to do the teaching school's got to behave got to teach them morals but all that's supposed to be at home and i yeah. think we we sort of like ex our parents excuse and say well you know that's why we send our kids to school to learn all these things but home life man it's one of the biggest things where you know it can be it can be hell for kids it can be, and, and when you you touched on it before, there's stresses at home, you know, mm. there's financial difficulties, yep. and some people end up in domestic violent yep. relationships because once again, violence is the inability to articulate their frustration, yep. and the kids start to think it's their fault. Mm. They see mum being slapped around, they get slapped around, because and then they grow up and they do the they same do thing. They do the same they thing. They out of the same way, right. and yeah, I mean, I I don't know. I mean, sometimes I get so frustrated. It's like, how do we solve something like that but then i go well here you are or oh, here we are and we're talking about it and we're and we're adding to the com um, conversation yeah to open up and say hey look this is what we get that's on offer out there and let's and i just don't like when people bring politics into it hmm. or agendas into it yeah and they they go well well you need this to do this and i'm like no you really don't just help them just yeah. just take yourself out of it, make a place for them, let them talk it out, and move away. Yeah, and just, I'm all about linking people to help. Yeah. They're going to link you to help. If not right now, how about like in, mm. in an hour, how about like sooner than a week or a month or three months? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And if I can't, yeah. maybe we know someone who can. Definitely, I'm all and about that. And that's how, I think that's how we need, we'll work out ourselves, and I think... I have this real strange thing. It's like, I mean, I'm waiting for this past generation to move on. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I mean, it's not it's a no, not a rudeness. It's not a non-appreciation or anything. I love them for everything they've done, but I'm like, there's some things you've done that you're holding us from doing. Yeah. That is opening up about our lives. And and you're, you're putting up walls and you're trying to say, we can't do this, or you don't have the money to do that, and we're going to hold back the money to, because you want that. And I'm thinking, well... I don't want you owning anything of what I am about. And therefore, it allows gets rid of all the politics. I can walk down the street and talk to anyone because it means I'm not affiliated with any one thing. You know, and I think that's what I love about the fact that you're not political, you know, not w work, waiting on anyone to give you money so you can go there and do this. Whereas you're just, okay, um, if anybody wants to be in on it, yeah. be in on it. The community, the community yeah. call me, they go, how much for a show? How much for three shows? Yeah. And I go, well, this is how much. I live in Whangarei, yeah. um, and I have to pay uh, my sound technician, who's also my kaitiaki. Yeah. He's my spiritual guardian. I, I read that, and I was like, and I thought, that's awesome. See, uh, I'm, I like, um, you know, you need someone like that. Oh, yeah. You need someone yeah. to bounce off and question what you're doing. Is it, am I saying it right? Or yeah. was my behavior proper in that instance? Because then you can, like, help yourself change yourself because I think if we stop pointing out there and pointing in here and I don't mean in a depressive way where you go oh man I should blah, 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 because then our negative brain starts yeah. hitting yeah. us and I have this um, saying F-U-S which I can't Oops. sorry my bad uh, sorry guys we just, our 